Hello, my name is Emma Leith, and I am part of the Galaxy P team at the University of Minnesota. Today, I will be explaining how to run the encyclopedia workflow, including an explanation on the workflow's inputs and its different steps. As Pratik mentioned, encyclopedia is a very powerful tool that allows for the analysis of DIA data, and I will be happy to walk you through running the encyclopedia workflow on Galaxy EU. Specifically in this presentation, I will give a brief explanation of the data sets and workflow before we run the encyclopedia workflow. Then we will go into more detail on the different tools and parameters included in the workflow, as well as variations on this standard encyclopedia workflow that you can use to tailor the workflow to your specific data. Lastly, we will go over the results of our workflow test and I will give you a summary of the outputs generated and their results. When running the standard encyclopedia workflow, four inputs are required. One, an experimental DIA dataset collection of a wide window variety. Two, gas phase fractionation or GPF dataset collection of a narrow window variety three, a spectral or prosit library in a DLib format, and four, a background protein FASTA file. The initial experimental DIA dataset collection and the GPF dataset collection will both be in a .raw format. These datasets are both made up of the same DIA data. However, while the experimental DIA dataset collection is made up of wide windows, the GPF dataset collection uses narrower windows for the pooled data with multiple acquisitions per precursor scan. Then the GPF dataset collection is used in the generation of the chromatogram library that will be searched against in the analysis of the experimental dataset collection, hence providing the context of the specific DIA sample being analyzed. The last two datasets required are a DLib spectral or PROSIT library and a background FASTA file. These two inputs are both required in addition to the GPF dataset collection in generating the chromatogram library. Once the chromatogram library is generated, it will take the place of the DLib input library and along with the background FASTA file, it will be used in the quantitative analysis of the experimental DIA data. Here is an image of the encyclopedia workflow. I will briefly explain the three different steps of the workflow now before we run it as part of the tutorial. The first step is the conversion of files using MS Convert. As the experimental dataset and the GPF dataset are both in a .raw format in this tutorial, they must be converted to a .mzml file type which is the appropriate input type for the search to live and encyclopedia quantified tools. The next step is the generation of the chromatogram library using the search to live tool. As mentioned, the chromatogram library is generated using the background FASTA file, the DLib library, and the .mzml GPF dataset collection, previously converted by MS Convert. The generated chromatogram library in an elib format will take the place of the original DLib library input, and I will discuss the importance of this later on in the tutorial. The last step of the workflow is the encyclopedia step and the analysis of the experimental DIA data. This step uses the chromatogram library, the background FASTA file, and the .mzml experimental dataset as inputs. Now that you are familiar with the three steps of the workflow and the general encyclopedia inputs, we are going to run the encyclopedia workflow together on Galaxy EU. Go to the Galaxy EU site at usegalaxy.eu. If you do not already have an account, it is easy to make one by clicking log in or create an account. Once signed in, we're ready to begin. The first step in running the workflow is to create a new history. 
To do this, click on the plus sign here in the upper right corner of the screen. Once the new history is made, give it a name that is informative on the workflow being run and the data being analyzed. In this case, I am going to name the history Encyclopedia GTN IPRG Analysis June 24th, as I always like to add the date to my history title. Next, we will be importing the data. For this tutorial, we are using IPRG DIA data. Accessing the data is simple. Go to the linked Galaxy Training Network tutorial for Encyclopedia that is associated with this video. Scroll down to the Import Data section. Here you will find many Zenodo links, which is how we will be importing the data. Zenodo allows for online storage of files and direct import to your Galaxy history for analysis without the need to download very large files onto your computer, which is very slow and a big hassle. To do this, press the copy icon. This will copy all of the links, each of which is associated with a data file that we need to run the encyclopedia workflow. Then go back to the Galaxy history that we created before. Click the upload data symbol on the left panel of the screen and at the bottom choose paste slash fetch data. This box will pop up and at this point you can paste the links that you previously copied from the encyclopedia GTN. Then click start and the files will begin to upload to your history one by one automatically. Again, this method is much faster than the downloading the files onto your computer and then uploading them. At this point, I fast forward through the recording because uploading the files takes a few minutes. Once it turns green and you've uploaded your data, we will be renaming the data sets so that the name only contains the sample name without the percent %20 character, and we are going to remove one of the dot raw prefixes. To do this, click on the pencil icon, edit attributes. As mentioned, we will edit the name so it only contains the sample information. So in this case, remove the GPF DIA dataset collection, as well as the percent %20 dot raw. Now the file name only contains the sample information and one dot raw. We will repeat this process for all six GPF files. Again, I fast forwarded through the editing because it's the same for each six of the GPF files. Now we will rename the experimental files similarly. Click on the pencil icon of one of the experimental files and remove experimental DIA dataset collection as well as %20.raw so that the file name only contains the sample information. We will again repeat this process for all four of the experimental files. Again, I fast forward through this process because it's the same for each of the files. The FASTA file and the DLib file do not need to be renamed. So once we've renamed all of the GPF and the experimental files, we can move on. As the data files are renamed, we can now create the dataset collections that will be required to run the workflow. We will create two dataset collections, one containing the experimental.raw files and the other containing the gpf.raw files. To accomplish this, click the checked box in the right corner that says operations on multiple datasets. Then check the gpf files. You will check six boxes. Once selected, click the For All Selected tab and then select the Build Collection from Rules option. 
When the dataset collection window pops up, add an informative name to the collection. In this case, I'm going to name it IPRG GPF Dataset Collection. Then click Create. We will follow the same steps to generate a dataset collection for the experimental files. Clear your GPF check marks by clicking the None tab at the top, and then select the experimental files. Click the For All selected and Build Collection from Rules again. This time, I will name the collection IPRG Experimental Dataset Collection. and then cl click Create, and again click the checked box in the right corner that says Operations on Multiple Datasets to remove the boxes as we're done creating dataset collections. At this point, you will have two dataset collections you've created, an experimental dataset collection with four items, and a GPF dataset collection with six items. Now that we have uploaded the data and created the dataset collections, we will upload the workflow. For this, we will go to the shared data and then workflows at the top of the screen. Let's use this search bar at the top of the screen and type in encyclopedia and the workflow that we are going to use is labeled June 22nd GTN Encyclopedia Workflow Raw Inputs. We can use this drop down arrow and click the import to import the workflow to our list of workflows. Then, let's go to the Workflows tab at the top. Here we see Imported June 22nd GTN Encyclopedia Workflow Raw Inputs. Once the workflow is pulled up and we are ready to run it, we can click Run Workflow on the, that icon on the right-hand side of the Encyclopedia Workflow. Each of our files and dataset collections from our history has a specific place to go in the workflow. Specifically, the GPF dataset collection that we made will go in item number one under GPF files. The DLib file will go in item number two, the spectral or PROSIT files. The experimental dataset collection will go in item number three under experimental DIA data. And lastly, the background FASTA file will go under item number four, background protein FASTA file. Once all of these inputs are in their correct slots, we can click Run Workflow. Once you've run the workflow, this page will pop up with information on the invocation of the workflow, as well as the progress of what steps have yet to be completed. The nice thing about running workflows on Galaxy EU is that they do not require constant attention, meaning that you can hit Run and complete other tasks and do not need to be on your computer to watch the workflow run. And in this case, it's very helpful as the encyclopedia workflow can take five to six hours to fully run. And so you don't really want to be tied to your computer for that entire time. Therefore, while we leave the workflow to run, I am going to go through the steps of the workflow in a little bit more detail. As previously mentioned, the first step of the Encyclopedia workflow is the conversion of files from .raw file type to the .mzml file type, which is an important step as Search to Lib and Encyclopedia both require .mzml input file types. While file type conversion is the simplest step, it is also the step that is most tailored to the data input. More specifically, the parameters used by msconvert to convert the files will vary between different input data samples and need to be set by the user accordingly. In this case, the specific parameters that were changed from the default parameters are shown on the screen. I will now take you through the, a quick peek at the parameters on Galaxy E. So to examine the parameters of msconvert, we can go into the editing mode of the workflow. To do this, go to this drop-down menu and click Edit. Then, once it loads,
There we go. Once it loads, go to the MS Convert step. As you can see, the output type is MZML. The parameters that were changed from the default setting are apply peak, peak picking, which was toggled to yes. The demultiplex overlapping or MSX spectra, which was also toggled to yes. Under that specific parameter, optimization was changed from none to overlap only. Next, the sim as spectra option was changed from yes to no. And lastly, the intensity encoding precision option was changed from 32 to 64. The, these same parameters were also changed for the conversion of the experimental DIA data, as well as the GPF data. Again, it is important to realize that if you use the encyclopedia workflow with your own data, make sure to alter the MS convert parameters as needed to accommodate this. The second step of the workflow is the generation of the chromatogram library. A challenge to analyzing DIA data is that DDA generated libraries or predicted spectral libraries are not always a reasonable representation of DIA data. Differences in retention time, methods in data collection, and coevolution cause significant differences between DIA and DDA data. As Pratik mentioned, using a chromatogram library can bypass issues that arise with a DDA data generated library or a predicted spectral library. The inputs to search to lib are the GPF dataset collection in MZML format after MS convert, the background FASTA file, and the DLib library, either DDA generated or predicted spectral library. As the GPF dataset collection is generated using the same DIA data as the experimental dataset collection, it provides context to the data to analyze, as well as takes into account the differences between DIA and DDA data. An important distinction between the experimental DIA data and the GPF DIA data is that the GPF data uses multiple acquisitions for each precursor scan that caused the windows to be much narrower than the experimental DIA dataset collection. The narrow window, windows used in the GPF sample preparation mean that the GPF dataset collection offers a very rich and in-depth understanding of the experimental DIA sample contents, which makes it very useful in library generation. Therefore, when used in combination with a DDA-generated library or predicted spectral library and the background FASTA file, DIA GPF data not only provides the context of the experimental DIA data, but allows for the generation of a richer and more finely tuned library for analysis. Additionally, as mentioned, the chromatogram library generated will take the form of a .elib file while the spectral or prosit library will be in a .dlib format. elib files contain more information, including retention time, mass to charge ratio information, and intensity compared to the dlib file type, making it a more thorough library to use in data analysis. Again, let's take a look at the search to lib parameters the same way that we did with MS convert. So as you can see in search to lib, going into the parameter settings, all of the settings are either toggled to no or we use the default parameter options. Additionally, you can see in this search to lib box that a input dataset log text file is also generated. However, as we are mainly focusing on the elib chromatogram library, this is the emphasized file that is 
output. The actual data analysis of the experimental DIA files comes with the last tool of the workflow, Encyclopedia Quantify. The inputs for this tool are the background FASTA file, the experimental dataset collection to be analyzed, and the chromatogram library that takes the place of the DLib library that was used in the previous step. If we examine the parameters of the Encyclopedia Quantify tool in this workflow, we see that the original default parameter settings were used again. Additionally, we see that Encyclopedia Quantify generates many different output files, including a log text file, a quantify input datasets and elib file, a concatenated quantify input datasets in a tabular format, and then two tabular files one quantifying the peptides and one quantifying the proteins. These two files are the primary files that we use to analyze the results of our workflow in this tutorial. Here is the agenda slide again, and now we will discuss how the encyclopedia workflow can be tailored to your specific DIA data by altering the parameters of the workflow, as well as variations of the workflow that are available. If you converted your experimental and GPF files to the MZML format outside of Galaxy EU, you can alter the standard workflow to directly use your MZML inputs, which I will demonstrate now. Simply, you take out this MS Convert step. So to edit the workflow to accept MZML inputs, go to the Workflows tab at the top. I am already here. Go and make a copy of the Encyclopedia workflow using the raw inputs that was taken from the Shared Data Workflows tab and make a copy. Now open this copy in the edit mode And for both MS Convert steps, click Remove, which is this little box, and the X. Now connect the GPF DIA input to the Spectrum files in MZML format. Do the same with the experimental DIA inputs to the Spectrum files in MZML format for the Encyclopedia Quantify tool. Now we are going to rename these inputs just to indicate that they are going to be in the MZML format. We will do the same for the experimental data. Once we've done that, we can just click Save Workflow. And then if we go back to the Workflows tab, we will rename this workflow to indicate that it uses MZML inputs. So I'm going to add MZML input compatible. And simply put, that is how to edit the Encyclopedia standard workflow from accepting the raw inputs to accepting MZML inputs in case you converted your files outside of Galaxy EU. If you are missing the predicted spectral library, you can still run the Encyclopedia workflow. However, you will be running a variation on the Encyclopedia workflow called the Walnut Encyclopedia workflow. If you don't have a spectral library, then the number of quantified peptides and proteins will likely not be as high as if a library was used. More information on this can be found at this link on the screen for a poster where the Galaxy P team tested the Walnut versus the standard Encyclopedia workflows. The Walnut Encyclopedia workflow is easy to generate using the standard Encyclopedia workflow. Simply, we are going to remove the DLib input file. 
To do this, again, go to the Workflows tab in Galaxy EU and create a copy of your workflow like we did before. Open the workflow in edit mode and select the spectral or POSIT library file and simply click remove. Then click save workflow and back to workflows. And now we're just going to rename this copied workflow to indicate that it is the walnut variation of the workflow. This specifies that this walnut encyclopedia workflow uses raw inputs. If you followed the protocol that I described to produce a workflow that uses MZML inputs, you could create a Walnut Encyclopedia workflow that uses MZML inputs as well. So this workflow can be tailored very well to your specific data and what works best for your data. So now that I have briefly explained the different parts of the Encyclopedia workflow in a little bit more depth, as well as variations on the workflow that you can make, let's take a look at the outputs from the test that we ran together on the IPRG inputs. The Encyclopedia workflow can take many hours, as I mentioned. So while your workflow might not be completed at this point in the video, I have a history here that I ran on June 22nd, a few days ago, in which the Encyclopedia workflow has successfully run on the same IPRG inputs. So if we scroll down here, items 15 and 22 in the list are the dataset collections of the experimental and GPF data once converted to the MZML format. Items 27 and 28 are outputs of search to lib, the log text file, and the chromatogram library in a eLib format. Lastly, items 32 and 33 are outputs of encyclopedia, as well as output 29. Outputs 32 and 33 are the quantitation outputs for the peptides and proteins that very clearly state the number of peptides and proteins that were found in the sample. For example, it looks like there were 24,457 peptides that were quantified and 4,460 proteins that were quantified. The tabular format of these files means that they are compatible with Excel and accessible to examine in other platforms. Additionally, statistical analysis tools such as MS Stats, MAP DIA, and DeFacto are recommended for further analysis of these files. Again, while these are the files that are shown as outputs of Encyclopedia 29, 32, and 33, there are also hidden files that you can find by clicking this hidden thing. Uh, button at the top to include 30 and 31, the other output files of Encyclopedia, the quantify in an elib, and the concatenated results in a .txt format. Well, that concludes our run of the Encyclopedia standard workflow. Thank you so much for following along. We would also like to thank the Galaxy Training Network and the Galaxy EU team with all of their essential help in creating this tutorial. If you have any questions following running the tutorial or have any trouble with the workflow, please feel free to reach out to the Galaxy Training Network page that is linked. Additionally, please review our training protocol as it helps us improve where we can. 
Again, thank you so much for listening from the Galaxy P team.